So while everybody's getting their food, I thought I'd just start talking. You don't need to pay careful attention at the beginning unless you want to be entertained. So this is the Antikythera mechanism from, 2000, from 200 BC. This is probably the first known computer. Uh, and uh, you can see that uh, the, uh, this is the actual piece that was found. And it turns out to be about 32 gears that were set up to mark the uh, movement of the planets and the sun and the earth and it identified the eclipse. And here is a CT scan of this piece right here and a 3D reconstruction of it so that you can see the teeth. And this was a model that somebody had, people had built. And uh, it was exceptional at the time that we now know it had minor flaws that reflect the Greek knowledge of the solar system. But nothing like it again occurred until 1400s. And we'll get back to uh, sort of computers like that later. Uh, so my name's Rain Geis. I'm the chair of the organization for two years and I'm in the middle of my uh, process here. And today what I wanted to do is I'm going to talk about today's imaging informatics environment, the bigger picture of clinical informatics, and then Sim's new strategic plan and our goals. So uh, at the Dwyer at lecture, Brad Erickson asked, who is the star? Okay. Well, I got a different sort of kind of picture about that. So we, you know, these are the, really the stars, okay? You know, in this whole organization, I'm kind of the weakling around all the people that have taught me a lot of things, okay? Fifteen years ago, as a sim novitiate, I barraged experts of industry and practice with every imaginable beginner question, and they patiently explained everything to me from basic packs and the subtleties of HIE all the way to coding mirth and Python. But their help, me, their help allowed me to innovate my practice and hospital system so that we have competitive edges in quality, efficiency, and profitability. So, you know, now I'm, I'm in private practice and my practice looks kind of like this, okay? Here I am in Colorado. You know, I, and we uh, deal with things that are we, we're better than the folks down the road from us, you know, in, in competing with them, but we no longer have to compete with them. We're, we really are part of a cottage industry, uh, still with basic IT, even though it's better than the guys down the street. Um, the, but with the advent of teleradiology, our competition is no longer the group next door. So what competition do we fear now? Well, how about this group? Okay? Save money. Live better. Okay, that's a nice motto. So how are they going to do that? Well, they do that with better consistency. They're more efficient. And to do that, they don't have Walmart informatics. They have Neiman Marcus informatics. They don't just monitor turnaround time. Okay? They're going to monitor every micro part of the imaging process, how long it takes, how many supplies we use. You know, when somebody has an incidental pulmonary nodule, they want to know how often I put in the right Fleischner criteria and does that recommendation occur. So, you know, how am I going to compete with Walmart radiology? Because this is truly going to be our competition. So, you know, in the good old days, well, one of the things that happens right now is that people talk about how things are getting harder, and I think this slide explains it. So this is out of a great book called IT Savvy, which studied other types of IT organizations, other types of industries and how they became IT Savvy, and we're behind them on the curve. But, you know, back in the beginning for us, we had local control of our own radiology IT and our own informatics. But now as the enterprises decided to become better, they're starting to standardize things and the most advanced places are even starting to try to optimize. But what's happening to us is we have less local control and we're on this curve. And, you know, some of the places 
the most advanced places are out in this part of the curve. They're just like on the roller coaster where the bottom just fell out. The rest of us are kind of along here, but all of us are feeling this pain. So one of the things that's been described is, and I think you're seeing it a lot, is that people are starting to jump these curves now to try to get onto the enterprise curve because it's the one that's moving up in terms of sophistication and agility as well as resources. And you know, this is a chaotic time for all of us, but it's a place where all of us are sitting right at the moment. This is the other thing that's happening to us. You know, EMR is, frankly, at the core of a lot of what's going on in IT, and anybody who's going through a new EPIC implementation or other EMR implementation knows that that's sucking the air out of the room. You know, and then there's, to the enterprise, you know, we just, little old radiology, at least they gave us a different color maybe than most everybody else, but we're out on the periphery and we just, to them, look like some small piece, all right? And it's hard for them sometimes to see the value of dealing with things out there on the periphery when they have all these other things going on. So, and, uh, you know, at least, you know, we're, we're going to start doing things a little bit differently. Okay? But I think for, you know, the radiologists, you know, even those of us who are sitting there where, with our blinders on saying, I just have to generate more RVUs, we get the sense that something's bearing down on us. Okay? And, you know, this is an, ad, an actually a relatively old ad from one of the Fuji uh, ads in the PAX things. And here's another one from one of the old Fuji ads of, you know, just the pressure that all of us are feeling. And we used to laugh when we saw these ads. Well, we're not laughing anymore. Um, and then we, we, we get to that sense, and, and I can tell you that a lot of radiologists are screaming and saying, oh, now you need to come to IT and, you know, we want you to fix everything and want it to be perfect and just fine right overnight. And, you know, what they're really asking sort of is for a little can you just sprinkle some of this IT fairy dust around and make everything perfect for us? And everybody who's sitting in this room knows that, you know, it's probably, <laughs> this is the way I feel. You know, I'd sleep better if I actually believed in the darn stuff. The problem is that it, you know, it just doesn't work that much. But we're pretty fortunate because it seems, looking around the room, like there's this younger generation of sim magicians who really have a lot of magic for us. And, you know, I just have an example of a few of those people. So, <laughs> you know, so, you know, here's magician Mark and ma magician Chris and, of course, magician Wujin there in the middle there. So, trying to, <laughs> trying to do that. These guys are going to save our butts, you know. And, and they're here at this room. So I think that's a, it's still an exciting time because there are a lot of people doing great things for us. So your SIM board has really been working hard over the last nine months to try to come up with a new strategic plan for how to deal with all of these different things that are going on. Our world is incredibly different than it was even three or four years ago. And I want to present today a little bit about our strategic plan. So SIM's vision is to lead imaging informatics. And that's all that SIM does is in medical imaging informatics. That's what we're focused on and that's what we really want to do. And we're doing it because we want to improve imaging quality and efficiency and our patients' well-being. And how are we going to do that? Well, we, what we want to do is we want to promote imaging informatics in every way possible. We're going to do that through education, through research and innovation, translating ideas such as Brad described previously, and we want to collaborate more with a variety of people and really work on this. We want to collaborate with industry both to develop the products that we need and then to prove the business value of those products so that after they build them, we can convince senior management that, that we, of the value of them so that we can get them into widespread use. We want to 
collaborate with the larger clinical informatics community, with groups particularly HIMSS and other clinical informatics companies, because now we are jumping from one curve to the other. We have to be involved in the greater clinical informatics community. And then we want to collaborate with other people in the imaging community, uh, people who may not be primarily focused on informatics, but who uh, we need to pay more attention to. But, you know, the real mission of what we all want, you know, is, is this, okay? I want, I want everybody who's working in IT, you know, my IT people and my industry people to just be happy and everything being going right, okay? If we're all doing this next year, then I'm going to think that I've done the right thing. So, Sim's goals, I think one of the things that we want to do is try to change the imaging informatics landscape. And uh, that is to be the expert resource on imaging informatics and to provide new content for members in the clinical informatics community and we want to focus on different types of education both for our members, for the larger clinical informatics community and certainly for SIP uh, career in development. We want to try to develop more practical resources and tools to help decision makers such as CEOs and senior management make better decisions about imaging informatics. Right now more and more of those are being made a little bit in a vacuum and we need to influence that. And finally we need to maintain the organization's fiscal and organizational viability. So if we're talking about changing the imaging informatics landscape, we talked about increasing the collaboration and promoting SIM and imaging informatics to external as well as our internal constituencies and demonstrating the business value of imaging informatics. And we're going to discuss more of that today with the corporate leadership circle, but things that we've talked about include trying to promote awards for research that demonstrates the business value. And by that I mean if asking sites that are installing new imaging solutions to help them collect data before and after they implement new solutions and use those data to demonstrate that they have improved efficiency or improved quality and then publish those papers so that then the rest of us can take those papers to our CEOs and say there truly is a business case. Guidelines and standards continue to be developed. We have to identify, educate, and collaborate with relevant leaders in the regulatory and legislation process to optimize the use of uh, medical images both within the EHR and throughout healthcare in general. Some of that involves collaborating with the traditional radiology groups such as ACR or APM. Uh, but it also involves, uh, I think, a much stronger emphasis on collaborating with HIMSS in particular. And then they have the things about meaningful use and the ONC and CMS and explain to them what the appropriate way to deal with these things are and developing standards for them. And these are going to be areas where we're really going to focus strongly through SIM in the next few years. Uh, finally, we want to work on developing the guidelines for all medical imaging processes. You know, and this includes all those organizations that were on the previous slide, but as well as talking to NIH, and there are a whole variety of subgroups in NIH that relate to medical images, and they're becoming uh, vitally important and they're having an effect on our practice and we'll, I think will have a much bigger effect 
and we need to identify which are those organizations that have uh, are setting imaging standards and guidelines and make sure that we are strongly involved in those places. And we talked about funding, publishing, and publicizing imaging informatics research and best practices. So you're going to see that push both from the organization and more of those papers in JDI. In terms of education and career development, the SIM is really the place where you learn to do imaging IT. And uh, the annual meeting is our lifeblood, and it's still the place where everybody wants to come, both because you have great educational experiences, but also because you get to network and try to solve your issues and sit together and write code and find the right people to ask questions and, and learn your answers. But not everybody can come to the meeting anymore. And so we have to come up with a more robust website with a large amount of content aimed at each of the different audiences, both senior management, providing contents that's useful to industry to educate their own people, as well as physicians and uh, SIPs and other uh, IT people. And so we're going, you're going to see a new website coming out over the next year, uh, really designed to try to provide a variety of different, uh, both content and sort of listservs and discussion groups, and a lot of that content is going to be moderated. Uh, so it should be the highest quality place. So again, SIM's going to be looked at as the place to come and get this type of content. We're going to facilitate this online knowledge sharing, um, and we want to identify and leverage our own intellectual property so that we can provide that appropriately to people. In terms of just our own fiscal and organizational viability, we're going to do, try to diversify our resources, uh, our revenue sources a little bit, and serve new constituents. Um, and we're going to update our corporate membership programs to address the changing needs of our industry partners. One of the ways to do that is to try to develop what we call project portfolios. And so we have developed these five different portfolios of projects. And, under, and, what's, and then we've assigned two board members to each one of these project portfolios. Those board members are just responsible for a higher level management of the uh, projects assigned to these portfolios. And our hope in this is that this is going to be sure that we've allocated the appropriate resources to get the projects done. I think in the past, you know, I've had a couple of people coming up to me during this meeting and saying, well, gee, you know, we talked three or four years ago about doing something and it sounded really cool and it hasn't happened. You know, why is that? Well, you know, we just, we lost a few things. You know, they just somehow, they never got the appropriate resources allotted to them. And so we're hoping that we're going to uh, improve that and both with time and money uh, to, uh, get things done, actual get these projects all finished. So these are the board members associated with each one, and I think you could, you know, if you have specific projects that you want under one of these titles, the, the board members that are associated with these, those are people to talk to. So project portfolio management is, is something, you know, everybody thinks of portfolios as sort of like financial portfolios. And, project portfolios is a little different, but it's a way of us being able to prioritize which projects we should be doing and then making sure that we've allocated the appropriate resources, then measuring the progress towards meeting these goals and finishing the projects and evaluating them on a regular basis. So that's the end of the uh, 
uh, chair's report, and I'd be happy to take any questions right now, or please come up and talk to me afterwards if you have other uh, questions or comments. Does anybody have anything they'd like to say right now? There are microphones out there in the audience. All right.